chapter 3 why do we need a parliament we proudly say that india is the largest democratic country in the world has the highest number of parliamentarians the total number of members in lok sabha is 545 in this chapter we would like to analyze what is the need to have a parliament how does the parliament function how are the members of the parliament elected and what is the role of the people in electing the members of the parliament these are the key factors what we are going to discuss in this chapter why should people decide we all know india has set up its parliamentary structure after india became independent in the year 1947 on 15th of August 1947, India attained its independence from the strong colonial rule of the Britishers. When they were formulating the rules and regulations, they always tried to do favor for themselves or for the country, the colonial master country, not for the Indians. So Indians, though they don't like it, Though they were forced to do certain acts which were against the interest of the Indians, but Indians never dared to oppose them. They were scared. They are afraid of the British should. They always used to frighten the Indians by giving horrible punishments to them, severe punishments to them who have opposed them. Sometimes they used to kill the people those who opposed them openly. So that the nobody else would dare. Like this, the British rule has created fear among the Indians. So during this period, it is only after the formation of the Indian National Congress, INC, in 1885, the way to bring out the dissatisfaction of the Indians, we got a proper channel. That is the Indian National Congress. Through that, the Indians started to become united and express their feelings or discontent towards the British rule. So with the growing dissatisfaction, the Government of India Act of 1909 was passed in which the representation was given for the very few sections of people or very less percentage of people were incorporated into the administration of the British rule. And here, as the awareness of the people towards the law and they started to question why are these kind of laws passed against the interest of the Indians. The people's participation was highly restricted when the British rule was in progress. So having the experiences of all these incidents and the situations, the framers of the Indian constitution kept in their mind that every Indian has to be made the participant of the government. Every individual has to be given the right to vote irrespective of any barriers. Every Indian should feel that he has his valuable contribution in formulating the policy of the government. So like this, the framers of the constitution, looking at the past experiences, what the Indians have gone through have given the universal adult franchise for all the Indians irrespective of the caste, color, creed, race, religion or gender discriminations. Any Indian citizen who attains 18 years of age irrespective of any discrimination will be getting the right to vote through which he can participate and decide in the elections. His vote is very valuable when the time of election comes. So this is the historical background why we need people to decide who should be governing us, who should be the members of the parliament. So all this has come up from our past experiences. Till now we have discussed what is a need or why should people decide 
about the members of the parliament or about the government structure why should be people playing an important role that's what we have discussed we have looked at the historical point of view why the framers of the constitution has given us the universal adult franchise now moving ahead people and their representatives people play a very vital role in democracy democracy is for the people by the people of the people as rightly mentioned by abraham lincoln till now we have seen and discussed what is a need for us in our country to give the concept of universal adult franchise we have looked at the history of india where many of the indians have suffered under the british colonial rule when there is no equality no scope for the people to participate in the decision making of the government against the same people who are supposed to follow the rules and regulations which are dictated by the government which were done against the interest of the people so looking at all these consequences the framers of the constitution guaranteed to all the people the right to vote which we call as universal adult franchise now moving ahead people and their representatives in democracy democracy is the best form of government of the 21st century this we can see when many number of countries like more than 50 countries turn to be a democratic front country from a non democratic countries so this ultimately reveals the secret that of the present century the best form of government is democracy abraham lincoln rightly described about democracy that it is of the people by the people for the people democracy is given of the people to serve of the people it is elected by the people it serves for the people it works to fulfill the needs of the people like this democracy ultimately revolves around the circle of people so without the consent or without the participation of the people democracy cannot be fruitful that's what in democracy we need first of all the consent of the people the consent of the people is a prime most important factor in democracy every individual's consent is required to run a successful democratic country or a successful democratic form of government how do they express people basing on the desires approval and participation of the people we get to know the consents of the people once if any interest or large section of people decide to have this kind of system should be in place this kind of rule should be in place that is a desire when an approval was made by the members of the parliamentarian and if it is getting approved here we get the approval and when it comes to the participation people participate in forming of the government by participating in the elections so how we run the democratic government is the first you secure the support of the people once you get the secured support of the people then you can strongly run the government you can form the government you can execute you can implement you can frame the laws without the support of the people you cannot be there even for one day as soon as the ruling party loses the confidence in the people's house definitely they have to resign so all these things reveals that the consent of the people is highly important in a democratic form of government now moving to answer a question how the approval of the government is done by the people we generally you know to get approved to anything we approach to an office we fill in an application form and we wait for the concerned officer to approve it so here in parliament or the functioning of the government how is it been approved by the people we have 120 crore population so will the government submit application to all the people is it possible 
practically it is an impossible task the members of the parliamentarians are elected directly by the people people use their universal adult franchise use their right to vote irrespective of the caste color creed region or religion and they approve the candidates to be the members of the parliament to the lok sabha and the elected representatives of lok sabha vidhan sabha vidhan parishad the state legislative assemblies all together will elect the members of the rajya sabha so these representatives will approve the bills of the government the laws will become an acts only once they are getting approved by the lok sabha and the rajya sabha so parliament plays a very vital role even a single penny cannot be sent or spent without the approval of the parliament